Let's talk about bass, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about bass today. Hello, interesting people from interesting places. I'm Ari Spiri, and today we're going to talk about two basic skills, two very important skills, especially for beginners, if you are just getting into the bass. Let's head on in to... The Room of Education. Alrighty, so... I was recently at the local jazz camp here in Kran, Slovenia, and did a little bit of participation with their late night programs. They get a lot of the musicians and professionals that have come to teach seminars and play the big shows on the main stage. And everyone gets together on a level playing field, and you just jam it out. Wonderful experience. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I will say that. But one thing was a little bit, not concerning, but a little bit frustrating. And that would be what I was seeing happening, especially with bass players. Now, my interpretation of the bass is that you are holding it down. That is your main job, is to hold everything down, keep the functionality of the material moving forward. Jazz players especially, me included, we get caught up in some of the complication and some of the show-off. And the more you push, the less you're listening. Now, this is very crucial for bass players because if we have no ground to stand on, then we're just kind of floating around aimlessly. Two things I want to talk about for beginners. First of all is linear playing. And this is something that I think more advanced players maybe struggle with. I know I struggle with it a little bit, especially now playing seven string guitar. You want to learn everything from top to bottom. And when you're learning everything from top to bottom, you're using a lot less arm movement because you are simply staying in position one and going from the top of your scale, E pentatonic for example, simply working your way up and down as far as height we'll say vertical axis the way I learned to play bass oddly enough was horizontally linear playing where you would be doing as many hand movements and arm movements as possible on the same string plenty of debate on which would be correct. I say do whatever's comfortable. But one thing I do enjoy about linear playing is that you are then opening yourself up to step number two, which is your octave work. You can, of course, use octaves if you're playing vertical fashion. But if you're playing linear, everything is laid out right in front of you, absolutely no problem. The octaves we'll talk about, you are going one full step from your main pointer finger position, one full step, and come down two strings. This is a very, very, very common octave pattern. Now, one interesting thing, when you're playing linear, it doesn't matter where you go, if you're on the E, E string or on the A string, same thing. That octave is always there, always. Doesn't matter where you want to go, you're always going to have that octave one step up, two strings down. When 
I started learning to play slap, this was crucial, actually, for not becoming frustrated on how to do your slap down technique and your snap on the upstroke. For example, we're going to play something everyone, of course, knows. We'll start simple. Now, standard playing, vertical playing, smoke on the water. So what then happens is you have new players oftentimes only making sense of one string. Now why is this? Well, I think because it eliminates a whole lot of complication and a whole lot of thinking, especially if you're not familiar with all of your notes all the way across. Again. Playing vertically, now horizontally. When playing linear, horizontally, you can simply do more work just one finger. Now, bringing octaves into the situation, it's going to be a lot more complicated to find your octaves if you're going to be playing in your vertical fashion, which would be, I would say, where every musician wants to be. But it seems to me it's a little more fun and a little bit more logical to know how to play linear and how to use your octaves effectively. So we're going to go E, G, A, B, and D sharp. And I'm going to do a little lick just simply showing how octaves work when you're doing linear playing. interesting thing is that if you're aware of standard power chords, which again, you're just incorporating an octave, and instead of excluding this middle string in between those octaves, simply one step up, copy what you're doing with your pinky. Now you have a power chord on the bass. Now, it works the whole way up when you're playing in linear fashion. Now, this will only work, of course, standard tuning on four string bass. If you're switching tunings, doing drop tunings, these patterns will, will mm, they won't work at all. So, with your slap technique, Knowing what you know about octaves, linear playing, and incorporating power chords, you can take the most simple linear and you can add in a whole lot of notes without having to walk around vertically. For example,
We'll talk horizontal and vertical, horizontal thumb technique for traditional jazz slap, and switching it to more of a, I've seen this from Flea, also from, let's see, Fieldy, from the, from the band Korn, and also Ryan Martini from Mudvayne, where instead of just playing in standard jazz format, you can shift your thumb, and now you can actually start to play full on three note chords in G. You have this basic power chord, but on the bass with slap, which sounds enormous instead of just sitting around and plucking around on your lowest string or switching between that or playing an octave, start incorporating full chords with your bass playing. I still use in my bass playing to this day. I prefer linear playing mainly because of that octave, which is where these two tips definitely come together in synchronization. When you play linear, you have your octave no matter where you go, all the way up and down the fretboard. I'm going to do a little bit of a jam for you. I'm going to do that in a sec separate segment so that this video is not stretching out too long. I'd like to do a few more tutorials like these. Just things that I learned when I was much younger. Because I think the more we complicate, the harder it is to play together. All right, I'm Aries Fury. That's going to conclude it for this episode. All right. I'm going to go ahead and jam out a little bit on linear playing and octaves for you guys. Let's get it.